The question asks us that the following behavior modification technique is based on which of the following theories. Now from the image what we can gather is that there is a younger child who is observing an older child sitting in the dental chair displaying cooperative behavior. So this kind of behavior modification technique is known as modeling. Now sometimes the image based question can be direct and they will just ask us uh, to identify the technique. Uh, it could be uh, such like modeling, it could be restraints, physical restraints like papoose board etc. However, this question has a slight twist. It's asking us to identify not the technique, rather which theory is the technique based on. So let us have a look at each of the options one by one. And now first being the social learning theory. Now the social learning theory was given by Bandura in 1963. His theory is based on the fact that behavior is actually acquired through social needs. It is motivated by social needs and we acquire uh, our behavior or our behavior is shaped by the events that are happening around us. So by observation, so by observation of the events, the, the events could be uh, we are observing another uh, someone like a model. We are observing their behavior, the behavior of the model and trying to imitate or replicate the uh, behavior that the model displayed. So this is the social learning theory. Its dental application is based on modeling like we saw in this question. Uh, where uh, 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 an older sibling uh, in the form of a live model or a video demonstration of another child who has, uh, uh, who has uh, demonstrated positive behavior in the dental operatory can be used to modify and shape the behavior of a child who is visiting the dental operatory for the first time or is fearful of the dental uh, visit. So that is the social learning theory. The second theory was the classical conditioning theory. Now the classical conditioning theory, classical conditioning theory is very famous because of uh, Pavlov's uh, experiment with the dog. So this theory helps us to understand uh, the phenomenon of white coat. So the, what is the white coat phenomenon and what is this theory? It, it tries to explain that when there are two unrelated, two unrelated stimulus how they get to uh, how they become associated with each other so uh, if you see white coat and pain they are two unrelated they are unrelated stimulus however a child associates these two events together this is because uh, as, uh, as a child he may have encountered uh, a visit to the uh, to the doctor where he has received a vaccination or an injection which has caused him pain and he uh, seeing a white coat is something that is not uh, that is not frequent for the child so he uh, assimilates this knowledge of seeing a white coat and pain and he combines so he associates these two unrelated stimulus so what happens is when he comes to the dental operatory and he sees the dentist wearing a white coat he might relate it again to the uh, to the uh, sensation of pain and display uncooperative behavior so this is the uh, uh, this uh, classical conditioning theory now desensitization is not a theory per se it is a uh, desensitization is not a theory it is a behavior modification technique so it's a behavior modification technique so here what we are trying to do is here the child is already fearful he has some preconceived notion or he may have had a bad experience before so what we do is we try to progressively increase the uh, threatening stimulus or the uh, fearful stimulus for the patient so we don't uh, uh, we don't bombard him with the fearful stimulus at one go we slightly increase it so uh, no, first we introduce him to something that is non-threatening and then slowly slowly we introduce him to slightly more threatening stimulus that he's fearful of so we try to wean him off his fear that is desensitization and lastly there is operant conditioning now operant conditioning was given by skinner operant conditioning was given by skinner and this is based on four tools this is the positive reinforcement the negative reinforcement uh, omission 
and punishment. So if we have a look at all of the options, uh, social learning is what modeling fits into the best because uh, like I said, he, the child is learning from what is around him, the environment around him or the society around him, he is learning the, to acquire positive behavior. So this uh, behavior modification technique is based on social learning.